Good evening. Welcome to Dispatch, the weekly show designed to keep you on track as you build and operate your layout. I'm Roy Smith, your dispatcher. I'm so glad you could join me again tonight, either here in the studio audience or out there somewhere in video land. Now, coming up on tonight's show, your layout photos, the question of the week, your comments, and a big shout out. I'm delighted to tell you that Mr. Justin Case has agreed to appear on tonight's show, just as he did last week. Tonight, Justin is going to offer us 10 big predictions for the future of model railroading. Well, we've got a great show lined up for you tonight, so don't go away. We'll be right back. Now, first up on tonight's show, your layout photos. Each week, I invite you to post photos of your layout in a Facebook group called the N-Scale Union Pacific Evanston Subdivision Group. And each week, many of you do just that. And then I bring your photos over here to Dispatch to share with everyone during the show. So once again, I have a bunch of layout photos to show you. And here they are. Okay, when Dispatch ends tonight, be sure to go over to the Facebook group, join the group, and post a photo of your layout there because we want to see what you're doing on your layout. It doesn't matter what scale you model in. I will put a link down below in the description to this video that will take you to the Facebook group. When you see this photo of Echo Canyon on my layout, you will know you're at the right place. Next up on tonight's show, the question of the week. Our question for this week is, what is your least favorite thing about model railroading? In other words, what do you least like to do on your layout? We've discussed this previously, but I suggested that we revisit it because lately I've heard a lot of friends express their exasperation with the hobby, and I felt it is important to ask why. So, here's how you responded to the question. 
As you can see, wiring was the big winner in this survey and by a wide margin. Why is it that so many of you dislike wiring your layouts? And how does doing it affect your interest in the hobby? Well, many of you find it to be intimidating and confusing. You say it's easy to mess up when installing the wiring and difficult to troubleshoot when you discover a problem later on. Let's go back to March 2018 when I discussed it in a video called Things We Hate to Do on Our Layouts. Lots of model railroaders say they really hate wiring their layouts. They say it's complicated, confusing, and even scary. You have to learn new skills and you have to buy new tools to do wiring. And many in the hobby are intimidated by the prospect of wiring their layouts for DCC. Well, who could get excited about crawling under the layout where it can be dark and cramped to do wiring? Where hot solder can drip on your face as you lie on your back under the layout? Who enjoys the prospect of making a mistake in the wiring and then having to troubleshoot the problem? Not me, certainly. Other leading things you mentioned in this survey included the cost of the hobby, ballasting, and track cleaning. And one or two of you mentioned the following things that you don't like. Bench work, scenery work, insufficient time, insufficient space, coupler incompatibility, decoder work, computers in the hobby, soldering, track work, layout planning, health issues, troubleshooting locomotives, a cleaning of the train room, and my personal entry in the survey, speed matching. I'd like to thank all of you for your responses to this week's question. It's good to know which parts of the hobby we don't like so that we're ready for them when they sneak up and bite us. Now, here's our question for the coming week. What do you like about the scale you model in? HO and N scales are the most popular scales, but certainly not the only scales. And each scale has advantages and disadvantages. One of the decisions we have to make when we first come into the hobby is, what scale will we model in? This isn't always an easy decision for newcomers to make, and sometimes they come to regret their decision later on. Let's help newcomers to the hobby with our answers to this question. I will tabulate your responses and share them in Dispatch next week. Watch next week's show to see the answers to this question. Remember, the question for the coming week is, what do you like about the scale you model in? And now it's time for your comments. This past Saturday, I uploaded a video called Model Railroad Staging Yards. Let's take a look at a clip from the video. Today, we're going to talk about my staging yard, which I consider to be one of the most important features on my layout. Stick around. That's coming right up. Hi, I'm Roy Smith. In this video, I want to tell you why I consider my staging yard to be so important. I also want to describe the bench work that supports the staging yard and the track arrangement in it. And finally, I want to briefly cover wiring and operations in the staging yard. Of course, by staging, I'm referring to tracks where trains are held until they are ready to come onto the scenic part of the layout. Many of you watched this popular video and a bunch of you commented on it. Here's what some of you had to say. Norman Rowe wrote, Hi Roy, nice explanation of your staging. It's difficult for steam locomotives though. You're absolutely right, Norman. It's difficult to turn steam locomotives around for the return trip if we don't have a turntable, Y, or reversing loop. And usually we don't have one or more of those things because of space limitations on our layouts. Fortunately, I only have one steam loco and one turbine that need to be turned around for the return trip. All of the rest of my diesel locomotives can do a simple runaround to the back of the train for the return trip. 
John Tanzillo wrote, Roy, very well done explanation and your overview of your staging level. Since I did not have staging in my previous layout, I went overboard a bit with 24 staging tracks on my current layout. I have two reversing loops, along with a big loop of track that joins all of the staging tracks and permits trains to stay together and be routed easily back in either direction without runarounds. Thanks, John. Wow, 24 tracks. Now that's a real staging yard. If I ever rebuild my layout, I'm sure I will look for a way to work a reversing loop into the design. Joey Busick wrote, Great video, Roy. I like how you kept your staging yard visible. My layout is small, consisting only of a single industry's yard, so staging for me is literally the yard lead out in the open and will be fully scenic. I suppose any place on the layout that allows you to quickly assemble and disassemble trains could be considered staging as well. You're right, Joy. Even a single track, perhaps running off the edge of the layout, can be used for staging, as well as for interchange with other railroads. And Jack Olimark wrote, Roy, I have always conceded that a staging yard is a must. As you say, it's the connection to the rest of the world. As always, you give us great ideas. Thanks, Jack. At this point my, in my model railroading career, I can't imagine a layout without some sort of staging. What a difference staging can make on the layout, regardless of the layout size. Now, I want to thank all of you who commented on the video. I've learned a lot just by reading your comments. If you still haven't seen Model Railroad Staging Yards, I will put a link to it down below that will take you directly to it. Be sure to watch it after Dispatch ends tonight. And now, it's time for tonight's big shout out. And tonight's big shout out goes to Daryl Cruz and his N-Scale Union Pacific Geneva Subdivision Layout. Daryl began to build his UP Geneva subdivision layout 11 years ago, but then in 2014 he moved from Illinois to Georgia. Fortunately, he was able to take his layout with him in sections to Georgia. Since then, he has reassembled and expanded the layout in the huge basement of his new home. And what you see in his videos today is a bigger and better version of a layout that, for many of us, would be the layout of our dreams. He did all of this within 13 months after moving. And since August 2015, he has been able to run trains all the way around his layout, a run that lasts 16 minutes at normal operating speeds. Darrell says he built his layout for operations. He strives to follow the prototype UP Geneva subdivision as closely as he can. Having completed the bench work, track work, wiring, and signaling, he is now concentrating on details such as roads, structures, and vegetation, and especially on operations. Darrell's layout features an 11-track staging yard representing Chicago and points east and Clinton, Iowa and points west. His layout also features an interchange with the BNSF. I really like Daryl's layout, and I know you will like it too. Let's go over and take a look at it right now. Gerald Cruz here for the Union Pacific Railroad Geneva Subdivision. I'm starting a new video series on the layout. Uh, we'll be posting hopefully once a week on the continuing uh, construction and operations on the layout. Now here's the first project I'm going to uh, work on and that is uh, the Global 3 Intermodal Yard just west of Rochelle. I'm going to just quickly walk around the layout to give you a brief overview of some projects to look forward to. 
A huge project is Rochelle, Illinois. A lot of roads to add here. This here the bridge is pretty well complete here. Then we have Wheaton, Illinois. Need to put in a train station there. This is Elmhurst. This is fairly finished. Do want to replace the backdrop. Not happy with this. Uh, then we have Proviso. But then also adding some more details also. Okay, you've had a chance to see a bit of Daryl's layout right here on Dispatch. Be sure to go over to his channel to see the rest of it. Don't forget to subscribe while you're over there and tell Daryl that Roy Smith sent you. I will put a link down below and that will take you to his channel. Daryl, if you're out there somewhere watching this, I just want to say that you've got a spectacular layout. I have really enjoyed watching you build and operate it. Thank you for sharing it with us in your weekly updates. And now, as promised, Justin Case is back on the show tonight by popular demand. Welcome once again, Justin. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, Justin, I understand you brought something for us again this week. Well, yes, yes, I, I brought these here, uh, these here 10 predictions about the future of model railroading. Really? 10 predictions for the future of model railroading? That sounds intriguing. How did you come up with them? Well, I can see the future. You can see the future? Yep. A couple of years back, I, I tripped on a rail while I was going across, the, uh, going across the tracks at the yard, and I fell and hit my head on the other rail. Well, since then, people have been saying I ain't quite right in the head, but I'm telling you, I can see the future. Well, okay, Justin, we'll take your word for it. Tell us, what are you predicting for the future of model railroading? Okay, first, here's the first prediction. Number one, derailments. Derailments are soon going to be a thing of the past. No more derailments on your layouts. The wheels on model trains are going to be magnetic. You could say kind of like a force field holding the wheels on the track. A big shift in the Earth's magnetic field is going to make this possible. Number two. Right-handed throttles. Yep, right-handed throttles. Just think about it. Which hand do you hold your throttle in when you're running your trains? In your left hand, right? Well, that's about to change. Soon everybody's going to be holding their throttles in their right hands. That's why we're going to see a flood of right-handed throttles coming onto the market everywhere. And it's going to be happening sooner than the numbers can change on that fast clock in your layout room. Number three, self-cleaning track. Don't you just hate cleaning your track? Well, pretty soon you won't have to do it anymore. Your track is going to be cleaning itself in the future. And in the twinkling of your eye, there will be a massive surplus of that there that there are isopropyl alcohol in drugstores everywhere. And since you won't be cleaning your track, you're going to have tons of time to ballast it instead. Number four, static grass for baldness. Now, I know you've been wondering what to do with all that leftover static grass you got. Well, I'm here to tell you. Bald men everywhere are going to start gluing it on their heads. A lot of guys are going to be running around with green hair from now on. It will be the cool thing to have green hair. If you don't have green static grass growing on your head in the future, people will start to think you're some kind of sissy. Number five, Lionel O-Gage trains are going to make a big comeback. You'll see them running in the windows of department stores and around Christmas trees everywhere. 
just like they did when we were kids. And speaking of kids, they're all going to lose their interest in cell phones and tablets because they'll all be running their trains all day and all night. And not those chintzy big boy locomotives either. No Cerebob, Bob, no more big boys. Everybody's going to be running Thomas the, tr the Tank Engine on their layouts from now on. Thomas the, Thomas the, you know what I mean. Number six. Now here's some good news for education in America. Everybody's going to be going to college to study model railroading. They're going to be studying track cleaning and bench work and track work and ballasting and scenery and operations and even speed matching. Hundreds of thousands of them, smart aleck young kids, will be seeking BA and MA degrees and even PhDs in model railroading. How about that? The departments of engineering and business administration are just going to collapse at universities everywhere. I'm telling you. Women. Women will start taking up model railroading. And they'll be wanting trains for Christmas and for their birthdays and even for their anniversaries. It's going to cause a shortage of model trains in stores everywhere. And a lot of train stores will have to close down because they ain't got nothing left on their shelves to sell. And young married couples are going to get into the hobby too. They've been living in those tiny apartments everywhere. And they're going to start to throw out their living room sofas and their dining room tables to make room for train layouts. The hobby is going to spread like wildfire. Yes, siree, Bob. Number eight, nuclear powered layouts. Now, maybe you've been thinking that DCC is the greatest thing since the invention of sliced bread. Well, I'm here tonight to tell you that DCC is on its way out. DCC will soon be about as popular as screen doors on submarines. You know what's going to replace DCC? I'm going to tell you what's going to replace DCC. Nuclear power, that's what. Layouts will be running on nuclear power. If that isn't exciting, I don't know what is. Everybody's going to have one of these small nuclear reactors under their layouts. Of course, there is one problem, where to dump all that radioactive waste. Well, most model railroaders will just dump it in their staging yards. Now, number nine, and here's my biggest prediction for tonight. This is important. Are you paying attention? The next president of these United States of America is going to be a model railroader. Yep, that's right, sir. You heard me right. The next president is going to be a model railroader. There's a lot of model railroaders out there waiting in line to vote. And their votes are going to put a model railroader in the White House. And that ain't the half of it. The new president is going to turn the White House Situation Room into a train room. That's right. And leaders from all over the world will come to the White House just to run trains. And peace will break out everywhere because the leaders will be too busy running trains at the White House to be fighting with each other. Ain't that just about the best thing you ever heard? I don't know what to say. I mean, those are some pretty unbelievable predictions that you just made. Oh, wait a second. You only gave us nine predi predictions. What happened to number 10? A dog got it. You're right. I must have Drop number 10 here on the floor someplace. Well, don't worry. You can tell us about it next time. I do hope you'll be back on the show very soon. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Justin Case and his nine predictions for the future of model railroading. Now, if you missed Justin's first appearance on Dispatch last week, 
you can go to it by clicking on the link to Dispatch 28 down below. In that first appearance, he shared with us the 10 things you will never hear a model railroader say. I encourage you to go on over and watch it later. Well, that just about concludes tonight's show, but I, I want to remind you to come back here every Tuesday night for Dispatch, uh, which you're watching right now and in which I get to interact with you. Also, be sure to come back every Saturday morning for my layout updates, in which I share the progress I am making on my layout with you. I encourage you to subscribe if you haven't done it yet, and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of the upcoming episodes on this channel. And don't forget to respond to the question for the coming week in the comments down below. A great big thank you to all of you who joined me tonight, both here in the studio audience and out there on YouTube. Sharing the hobby with you really is the best part of model railroading. Until next time then, happy railroading. I'm Roy Smith, and I will see you again very soon.